Today, we will be discovering the digital roots of numbers, delving into MongoDB object IDs, and then we will be implementing the lazy function evaluation pattern. Hello world, and this is Versus Code Wars. We begin today by calculating the digital root of a positive integer. Given a positive integer, the goal of this kata is to take the digits of that integer and add them together. We're going to repeat that process on its sum until a single digit sum is produced. That single digit sum is the number's digital root, and that is what will be returned from this kata function. Let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to go ahead and keep track of the result. We're going to go ahead and set that to n, and that's what's going to go ahead and be returned right here. What we're going to go ahead and do is while res result is on less than 10. Now, now this kind of ensures that only positive integers will be passed in here, so we don't have to check for negative numbers. What we'll go ahead and do here is we're going to do result equals n dot to string this will convert our number into a string we're gonna split that string with a blank string to get its indiv individual characters we're gonna run that through map and we're gonna convert those characters into integers and we're gonna do that with parse int And then we're gonna go ahead and run that through reduce. Adding each of those numbers together. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that number. This actually needs to be set to result. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that process until result is a less than 10. Let's go ahead and do some tests here and see what that looks like. As you can see in these sample tests here, we got two calls to digital root here, passing in 16 and 456, and they return 7 and 6. Let's go ahead and console.log those tests here. Console.log. We're going to go ahead and pass 16 and 456 into an array, and we're going to run map on that and run those two numbers through our digital root method. Let's go ahead and feed that into node and see what that looks like here. That is not right. Okay, where are we going wrong here? I expected to see seven and six here. There we go. We set a result to n. Result while result is uh, less than, while result is greater than or equal to 10, excuse me. All right, now we have our correct values. Let's go ahead and pass this into Code Wars here and see what that looks like here. We're only gonna copy the function body here because it seems the function name of this kata is using a different casing. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try submitting that. And we are good. Not really much to say about that one. However, if you use the unary plus or minus operator in front of a string, JavaScript will implicitly convert that string into a positive or negative number, respectively. I could have done that with the val argument in the reduce call in order to save calls to the dot map and parse int functions. I could also have used recursion on the digital root function, calling that function within itself in order to get the same solution without having to use the while loop. Here is a kata in two parts. 
First, we are going to go ahead and check to see if the string given is a valid MongoDB object ID. Next, we are going to go ahead and take that valid object ID and get the timestamp from it. A MongoDB object ID is a 12-byte hexadecimal string. The first four bytes is the timestamp, which indicates when that entry in the MongoDB database was created. The next five bytes are randomly generated. And then the last three bytes are an incrementing counter, which is also randomly generated. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. As I mentioned before, the uh, object ID string is a 12 byte hexadecimal string. Uh, what I think we'll go ahead and do is this will utilize regular expressions. We're going to utilize a regular expression here to determine if this is a valid object ID. What I think we'll go ahead and do is const object ID regex. We're going to have our caret and our dollar sign to indicate the start and the end of the string. Zero through nine. A through F. And we're going to check for 24 of those. Because, uh, as I said before, this object ID is 12 bytes. Each byte, the string representation of each byte will have two characters in it. GI, this I, cla this I flag here, will ignore casing here. What we'll go ahead and do is return true if the following is true. Return type of object ID is a string. String is not empty. And object ID regex dot test object ID. Uh, the test method in the regex object will test this re regular expression against this given string and will return true if it picks up a match. All right, let's go ahead and give us a little, couple of examples here. Let's grab these strings here. Uh, console.log. Let's uh, pop these strings here into an array. Copy, paste, and uh, copy, paste. I'm going to run these through map. Pungo dot is a valid. All right, let's go ahead and feed that into Node and see what that looks like. We have a true here, and we have a false here, indicating that this is a valid MongoDB object ID, but this is not, due to the presence of the Z here, which is not a hexadecimal character. All right, with that all being said and done, let's go ahead and do the timestamp function here. As with is valid, this also takes a string, which will need to be validated as a MongoDB object ID. And we can just go ahead and do if Mongo dot is valid object ID is false, return false. What we need to do here is we need to take the first four bytes of our object ID, and that will be the timestamp. We need to parse that out to an integer 
and then run that through new date. And we can do that by doing this. Return new date. And we'll pass in the return value of parse int object ID dot slice from zero to eight. And then the second argument of parse int will pass in the radix. Since this is a hexadecimal string, we'll do base 16. Now, this will return the uh, integer in milliseconds. We don't want that. We want this in seconds. So this will return the correct date. And we'll, we'll just go ahead and multiply this by 1000 here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take that, take these two strings here and run those through mongo.parse. Uh, no, get timestamp. Let's feed that in a node and see what that looks like. Uh, we should have our dates here. And the, the second one should be false because that is not a valid object ID. All right, let's go ahead and feed this into Code Wars and see what that looks like. Uh, paste that in. Since there's no sample test here, we can just go ahead and hit attempt to run the actual tests. And we have a problem. Two problems, to be exact. Okay, let's go ahead and console.log these IDs and see what's going wrong. All right, let's go ahead and feed this into Code Wars here. Maybe perhaps explicitly check the length of the string. Not length is exactly twenty four characters. Let me look through these tests here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Let's go ahead and get rid of this console not long here. And try feeding this into Code Wars. I'm sure we'll get the same errors. Okay, so I guess we. So I guess this is case sensitive and has to be lowercase. I gotcha. 
and we are good. In this kata submission's regular expression, you notice a number inside of curly braces. This indicates how much of a certain character class this regular expression should be looking for. In this case, we were looking for 24 of anything between lowercase a through lowercase f and the numbers 0 through 9. You noticed a method inside the regular expression object called test. This takes the regular expression and tests it against the string passed in, and returns true if it turns up a match. Another thing about MongoDB object IDs, I said that it was a 12-byte hexadecimal string. The letters in that object ID actually have to be lowercase for that object ID to be valid. I made the mistake of thinking that it could optionally be uppercase as well. That's not the case. Here we are implementing the lazy function evaluation pattern. I have a class here called lazy, and this class will have two methods. A method called add, which takes a function as the first argument, and the function's arguments as subsequent parameters. And another method called invoke, which runs that chain of added functions over a target array. Let's go ahead and get started here. First, we're going to go ahead and do the add function, the add method here. And this is going to take two parameters. Our function and the subsequent list of parameters that I'll pass into that function. And what we can do here is use the rest parameter here to spread those arguments out into an array. Let's go ahead and console.log that and see what that looks like. Console.log args. I'm gonna go ahead and create an instance of this lazy class here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run this add fun this uh, lazy dot add method here. Pass nothing in here. I'm just gonna pass in one, two, and three here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run that through Node and see what that looks like. And as you can see, we have our arguments here spread out into this array right here. All right, what we'll go ahead and do here in our constructor, we're gonna go ahead and set up an array of our added functions here. This.fFunks, and we're gonna set that to an empty array. And then what we'll go ahead and do in our add method here, we're gonna do this.funks dot push. And we're gonna push in an object here. We're gonna call the first key here funk, and then the second one here, args. Now what's going on here is uh, I'm passing in an object with only the keys in it. If the key and the value, so if the key and the values identifier are the same, you can go ahead and do this instead of this. Saves a lot of typing. Anyway, we have our this.funks.push and we push in our function and the arguments that we passed in. Next, we need a way of invoking each of these functions. And that's where our next method is gonna come in. All right, we have our invoke method here and it takes one parameter, our target array, an array that these functions will be run over. And what I think we'll go ahead and try doing here is let result equals target. I'm gonna return the result at the end of this. Alright, we're gonna run through each of these functions in a loop. For const func of this dot funks. We're gonna go ahead and console.log here and see if I have see if I have that right. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and modify our ad call here. And we're gonna modify that with probably this function in it. Takes two num two numeric arguments. Or maybe a function that takes one argument or what I'll just go ahead and do I'll go ahead and copy these functions from the kata here and paste them here And by the way, uh, we're gonna need to return this in the add method be here because uh, this kata here is calling for daisy chaining these uh, add methods in our invoke. And what we'll go ahead and be able to do from here. So I'm gonna copy this. So what we're doing here, we're first adding our filter numbers function here, which as you can see here, filters out, filters out anything in the target array that is not a number. And then we have another function here, which filters out any number in the array that is outside the range of these two parameters here. And then we have a third function here that calculates the maximum value of the numbers in the remaining array. And then we have this invoke call here, which calls this chain of functions here, passing in this array as an argument. Okay, going back up here, I have this console.log here in our for const func of this.func. So let's go ahead and run that through node and see what that looks like. And as you can see, we have our array of functions and arguments pass in. That is what we want. Let's go ahead and run a result equals this, this result equals func dot func. This is the function that's in this func object here. And we'll go ahead and pass in dot dot fun dot 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 funk dot args. I think I've got that right here. Let's go ahead and run that through node and see what that looks like. Oh, we do not have anything here. Of course, that'll happen if we don't set up. That that'll happen, of course, if. We don't assign this return value to a variable here, so let's go ahead and do const result equals all this, and go ahead and console.log that. Run that through node again, and that is not the result we are looking for. All right, let's go ahead and console.log the initial results. And the result after each run of our functions here. Our 
maybe I have this spread wrong here. Let's try this. Nope, that's... No, that's not the problem. Now, let's go ahead and get rid of these console.logs here. This rest parameter should be an empty array of nothing else is passed in. Let's console.log our args here and our add method here. Could well be why. Alright, let's try this. If the func.args.length is zero, then result equals func.func. .func. Pass in result. Else Result equals func dot func. Pass in our r func dot args and then our results. Wonder if this works. Uh, well, we don't have minus infinity anymore, so we're on to something. Let's go ahead and bring our back our console dot logs here. Maybe we need to spread out our result to I think that is the result we were expecting here. Let's go ahead and get rid of these console.logs here. And let's try feeding this into Code Wars. And see what this looks like. Hit copy, paste, and let's try submitting. Should test for something. I think we need to uncomment these tests here. Let's try that again. And we are good. Here is the better code solution of the day. Pay attention to the code snippet you see below me here and pay mind to the fn.bind call. The bind method in JavaScript's function object takes two arguments. The first argument is a substitute this context that will be used by the return function when you call it. The second argument is an argument list or an array of arguments that will be passed in to the return function when you call it. 
Two other methods that can be used when working with JavaScript's function object are the .apply and .call methods. Both take two arguments and run the predicate function when you call them. The first argument is the substitute this context you would like that function to use, and the second argument is the argument list. The difference between .call and .apply, however, is that .apply can accept a single array of arguments while .call accepts an argument list. And that will do it for today's episode of Versus Code Wars. If you like this video or you learned something new, drop a like and subscribe to this channel to see me take on more coding challenges on Code Wars. As always, if you think there's anything I can do to improve on my code, drop a suggestion in the comments section below. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next episode of Versus Code Wars.